Great Oaks Fellowship family, Pastor David here. I want to be one of the first ones on the behalf of Great Oaks Fellowship to wish you a happy, happy new year. I want to take a moment to encourage you. I just want to be able to speak a word into your life as you take your first steps into this new year. The truth is, is that we can make plans and we can create resolutions and those are all wonderful things. But when I look at the word of God, what we see is when we cross over, there's a way in which we can position ourselves to truly experience all that God has in store for us. And there's not one person watching right now that God doesn't have a plan, a purpose, and a way in which he wants to reveal his blessings, fulfill his promises, and to be able to lead you into a greater understanding of your purpose and what God truly has in store for this coming year. And so what we did is if you were at our New Year's Eve service, which was so special, it was so sweet, but maybe you were there, maybe you weren't, but we really just talked about three things that the Bible tells us that we can do to be able to position ourselves to experience all that God has in store for our lives. And so we looked at the story of Joshua, and if you know the story, Joshua is this newly appointed leader, and he's basically been put in this position to finish the last leg of this 40-year journey in the wilderness for God's people. He's about to lead them over into the promised land. And so this is what God had already already promised. He had already positioned them to be able to step into. But there were three things that they needed to do in order to enter into the promise the right way. And I think that there's some wisdom we can take from this as we step over and cross over into 2024. What Joshua told his people was this. He said, before you cross over, before you step over into the promise of what God already has in place for you, the first thing he says In Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, he told his people, he said, Purify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. And I know that you long to see God do wonders in your life. And that is my prayer for you as well, as well it is as for my family and for my next steps as a pastor of Great Hooks Fellowship. But what we see first is before we cross over, we need to purify ourselves, which literally means not to try to cleanse yourself. We're cleansed by the blood of Jesus, but we need to purify our hearts, purify our homes, take an inspection of just the things that maybe in 2023 clouded our ability to hear and to experience the presence of God in the way that we really long to. Take an inventory of your life and look at those things, those things that tripped you up, those things that held you back those mindsets, those perspectives, those behaviors that really kept you from experiencing all that God had for you in 2023. So purify yourself. Allow the Holy Spirit to show you the things that we need to leave in 2023 so we can walk in freedom in 2024. But the next thing that Joshua tells his people on the behalf of God, he says, today you will know that the living God is among you. He will surely drive out your enemies. And then he goes through this list of all different tribes and armies and forces that were in the promised land. And he said, listen, you need to understand that the Lord is your defender. The Lord is your vindicator and he will drive out your enemies. And so as you get into 2024... Just understand, it's not going to be smooth sailing. You're going to run up against obstacles. You're going to run up against things and people and issues that are going to try to discourage you and keep you from walking forward into what God has for you. And I just want to remind you, your job is not to pick up your own sword and fight your own battles. What we understand in scripture is that when we purify ourselves, we position ourselves to allow God to fight our our battles, to be able to face our enemies, to be able to go against the armies and the forces of evil that would keep us from stepping into all that God has for us. But we let God be our defender. We allow him to drive out our enemies as we pursue him and seek him first in his kingdom. And so once we've purified ourselves, once we understand our position that God is our vindicator, he's our defender, he's the one that overcomes our enemies, then what we're able to do at this point is what Joshua told his people, and he said this. He says, look, the Ark of the Covenant, which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the Jordan River. 
And so what that tells us is that when we seek first the kingdom of God, he will open pathways through the river. He will open pathways through the Red Sea. He is the one, when we follow him and allow him to go before us into this new year, he is the one that makes a way and that where there is no way. And so he's so faithful. We just follow the good shepherd daily. And understanding that, here's what happens. Now they're at the edge of the Jordan River. They're about to cross over into the promised land. But it was harvest season, it says. And the Jordan River was actually overflowing its banks. But as soon as the feet of the priests who were carrying the presence of God, they touched the water and the river's edge of the water began to go back all the way back to a town called Adam, as far away as Zarethim. And the water below that point flowed onto the Dead Sea until the riverbed was dry and the people of God crossed over near the town of Jericho. This tells me that the Lord is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever think or imagine when we take a step of faith into the water, believing that it will part open for us to be able to create a dry path through the Jordan River into the promise of God. But this is what gets me. The third thing that we are to do, first off, purify. Second of all, understand that God is the one who defeats our enemies. Thirdly, it says this, take 12 stones from the very place where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan and carry them and pile them up in a place where you will camp tonight. We will use these stones to build a memorial. In the future, your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them they remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the ark of the Lord's presence went across. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel forever. And then in Joshua 4, it's reiterated again. In the future, your children are going to ask, what do these stones mean? You can tell them this is where the Israelites crossed over the Jordan on dry ground. So we purify ourselves. We understand that God is the one who defeats the obstacles and the challenges that we're facing in 2024. But the most important thing that I see here that is important to the heart of God is that we remember his faithfulness. Maybe 2023 wasn't the year that you had hoped it had been, but we can point to moments when we pause and reflect these moments of God's faithfulness in our lives, the moments he extended grace to us, the moments that he came through for us, the moments that we did not know how we were going to move forward, he provided a way because you're here. You made it over to 2024. So take a moment today to reflect on the goodness of God and his faithfulness to you to lead you to this point. But he hasn't led you here just to keep you here. He has more for you. There is a promise of God on your life through Jesus Christ. This is what it says in closing. For the Lord your God dried up that river right before your eyes, and he kept it dry until you were all across, just as he did before in the Red Sea when he dried it up and you crossed over. He did all of this so that the nations of the earth might know that the Lord's hand is powerful and so that you may fear the Lord your God forever. In other words, he is God. He is over you. He is in control. He is sovereign. He knows exactly what he wants to do in your life here in 2024. Will you follow him? Will you seek him? Will you take steps of faith? Will you walk in greater purity? Will you understand that the battle belongs to God? Whatever battle you're facing right now or you're afraid you're going to face in 2024, the Lord is the one who will deliver you into the promise that he has for you. And so I just hope that this word encourages you. This is the word of the Lord. Stand on it, trust in it, and pursue it. Seek first the kingdom of God, the Lord tells us, and all these other things in your life 
will be given unto you. And so I pray the Lord's blessings over you. I pray that you will be encouraged to know that there is better in front of you. There are promises that God will fulfill in your life in 2024 as we continue to walk in greater purity, trust in him, and take steps of faith into the promise that God has for us. So I just want to pray a blessing over you right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, by your authority, for every single person watching this right now, I pray, Lord, that you would fill their hearts with hope and remove despair. I pray, Father, that the ashes of 2023, Lord, can be exchanged right now for a crown of beauty. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to release captives. I thank you, Lord, that you are going to defeat our enemies. I thank you, Lord, that there are good things in store for your children because you're a good God. We thank you, Lord, that your promises never fail. They can be trusted, and we know that they will also be fulfilled. I thank you, Lord, that the callings and the gifts that you've given us are irrevocable. Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that your word says that your blood speaks a better word over our lives. And so, Father, I'm praying in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we will see the victory. We will see the fulfillment of your promises. And God, that we, we would find ourselves taking greater steps of obedience and faithfulness and boldness, Lord, knowing that, Lord, you do not fail. I pray blessings over every single house, every single marriage, every single heart and home, mind, finances, health. Lord, I pray for greater measure of wisdom and Lord, a greater measure of peace on earth. Lord, we thank you and I pray your blessings in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for allowing me to take this moment just to encourage you and to remind you of what you probably already know. Keep it simple in 2024. Keep it simple. Quitting is not an option. If the Lord has brought you here, he has more for you. So trust in him and know that he will prove himself faithful. I am so thankful and honored to be your pastor. I pray that I can be the pastor, more of a pastor that you deserve in 2024 than you've ever had before. Pray for me. Pray that as I take steps of boldness, that I would be able to lead you faithfully into a greater understanding of God's word and his love and plan for your life. Blessings in the name of Jesus over your 2024. I look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday, normal service hours, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and let's pursue the Lord passionately, boldly, and with great faith this coming year. I love you, and I'll see you soon.